You know, if there could be such a thing as a perfect portable AM, FM, and shortwave radio, I think I found it. This is the Ratty RF760. Let's check it out. All right, we are zoomed in close today. Take a look at this radio. You guys might remember, oh, a couple of weeks ago, I reviewed this one here, and this is the Ratty 750. Okay, that's its big brother. This did a very good job of picking up AM, FM, and shortwave, as well as airband and uh, and, and um, weather and all that. But this guy has a whole lot more features in him. It also does upper and lower sideband. And you can differentiate between the two. It's not just a USB setting. It does upper or lower sideband. You have an attenuator on this thing, which means you can set the strength of the received signal if you want it to pull in more or pull in less. You have bandwidth filter. That's unheard of on a tiny little radio like this. And it comes with some pretty cool accessories as well. Really, really impressed with it. Now, normally, when I look at small radios, I'm kind of like, eh, you know, they kind of feel gimmicky and flimsy. This one, when I picked it up, had a really good feeling to it. Uh, it's got a nice belt clip on the back. You've got a tuner on the back. It is USB-C rechargeable. This slides off here, if I can get it off without hitting the camera. There we go. And you've got a 1,000 milliamp hour, 3.7 volt battery in there. Similar to the other one, the uh, 750. And the clip just slides right back on there. Slides on a whole lot easier than it comes off, which is a good thing, honestly. So I've charged this up and I've been playing with it a little bit, and i got to say I'm actually really impressed with it. It pulls in signals very nicely. The sound quality on it for such a tiny speaker is actually really good. And as, as funny as this may sound, I kind of like the ergonomics of it. You know, when it's in my hand, it just feels good. Now, I'm right-handed and I'm holding this in my left hand, but you can even still operate this somewhat as a lefty. So all in all, I really like the way the radio feels in my hand. The way the knobs are laid out and the primary rows of buttons here and the secondary rows of the tuning. The nice thing is this does have a clock and a thermometer in it, but it doesn't stay on all the time. One of the biggest problems I've had with bug out type radios that I put in a bug out bag is they run constantly. They got that display on there saying it's 9 o'clock, 9.01, you know, and, and that kills the battery over time. When you push the battery button on this one, you will see the display there and the temperature as well as the seconds, the battery level, and your um, time. Now, that's not the right time. I didn't set it yet. I do have to set it. But all in all, i got to say, I'm really, really impressed with it. Now, the telescoping antenna, which is fixed, is actually pretty impressive together. Uh, it's 18 inches in height when fully extended. And as one might imagine, the tip of the antenna is a little bit fragile. I wouldn't walk around with it fully extended or while attached on my belt with the belt clip. But for hand-holding, it should be just fine or standing upright on a table, doesn't tip over, that should be fine. Um, it does come with an external antenna, and that is cool. We'll get into the accessories in a sec, but I do want to show you the external antenna. This has a little clip on the end, okay? And there's your antenna, and this is your plug. It will plug into the top. Big, big difference using this antenna, got to say. Um, I like the fact that I'm not having to rig up something with an alligator clip. I can just plug it into the radio, and it's ready to go. And it's not a huge, obnoxious, thick wire either. It's a very thin wire. But the difference is really, really noticeable. We're going to try that out when we test it out outside. Now, the display is very readable. The orange backlight light really pops when you're making adjustments. So that's nice. I'm going to turn it on really quickly here so you can see it. Justice over their parallel investigation. You've got your volume up and down here. Now, I do have it on FM a on a talk station. Several members tied to the extremist if I did want to tune it... Because he's I can Justice turn it like that, no problem. Turn it back down again. And these are all your controls up top here. And these are all done by these buttons here. When you want to change, let's say I want to change that to uh, a wider bandwidth, I hit set, and I wait, and I hold it, okay? And then it would show me what I want to change there. See? This is also a signal strength meter. It shows you the signal strength of what's coming in. I could extend the antenna and improve that probably, as you see it going up. That's kind of neat, too. I mean, there's just so many features on this thing that it's really shocking that it's affordable. Um, the price on them is $99.99, so they're 100 bucks. But, uh, you know, for what you're getting, this is like, I would say this is on par with like a C-Crane radio, and I have a few that are a little bit smaller. 
And um, this thing does more than some of them, than most of them actually. So this thing is really packed with features. I'm not going to go into every last little detail, but I will show you all the different stuff this can do. Now naturally, of course, this has AM and FM on it, as well as weather, airband. Above the airband, you've got shortwave and CB. Yep, it actually has CB on there. There's also a customized frequency range for setting a monitor, uh, for monitoring a desired set of user frequencies. So if you have four or five frequencies that you know you want to monitor, you can range it in there and it will scan through them over and over again and uh, give you that. Of course, you can listen to the amateur radio bands and you can actually understand them because it's got sideband, upper and lower. So you might want to break out those charts to show you where to use upper and lower sideband on ham radio bands and you'll be able to listen into the hams. The cool part is, in a little bit here, it starts field day, so I'll be running inside to operate on my radio, but we'll be able to hear a whole lot of operators on the band. I suspect, usually before field day, and for those that don't know, you can look it up, it's just a, a uh, countrywide thing where all hams get together and operate, try to make as many contacts. Basically, it's to enhance your emergency preparedness. A lot of groups go out in the field and operate on emergency power. So all in all, i got to say, it's really impressive. It does have that attenuate feature function, which I thought was really cool. If you're near a very strong signal, you can turn that attenuator off, and it won't overload the front end of the radio. However, if you're trying to pull in very weak signals, you can turn the attenuator on. I'm going to put it on again so you can see it. I'm actually going to put this in shortwave mode. Uh, let me move the bands around here really quick. That's AM. You're not going to hear anything on AM out here anymore, unfortunately. And there's your... I don't know if you can hear anything. The lights can tend to kill any signal in shortwave. Um, when we get outside, you'll be able to hear this. But you'll see the attenuate feature here. And you can go to set. That's your bandwidth. And I can set that up or down as I want. Okay. And go over here. Click there. There's your thing there. Okay. There's your attenuator. So I can turn that on and off depending on what I want. Wrong button. Let me get back in there. There we go. Okay. And I can turn that on normal, okay, or off, or on. So it is kind of handy to have, that's local, I'm just not pulling local stuff. So it is kind of handy to have, and setting the, uh, the modes on this is just as easy as well. I'm going to turn down the volume because that's just kind of annoying over the, there. Anyway, um, setting the modes are simple as well. Alright, so you can set the set button there, and you can flash, you'll see there's your bandwidth. Your volume, your attenuator, and your upper and lower sideband. So we can take that up or down. Oops, I did it wrong. There we go. And you'll hit mode. And now you see it's switching into sideband. Okay. That's going to be your up sideband, upper and lower. There's your lower. And there's your AM. Back on AM again. So let's get this outside. I really want to test this thing out. Um, I do want to let you know about the tuning on it. Like I said, there's a very useful bandwidth feature on this that can change between 3, 2.52, 1.81, and 6 kilohertz, depending on how you want to tune through there. That's really handy with wider signals or smaller signals, depending on what you're going to be listening to on the radio. Um, that's a handy feature. I found that sometimes you can make a signal, uh, uh, if you're monitoring, you can make the signal a little wider, and you'll be able to pick up weaker frequencies a little bit better. All in all, I really like the radio. I'm going to give you the final stats on it, but I want to get it outside, and I want to test this out with the external antenna, and I do want to show you the accessories it comes with before we go outside. You're going to get that. You're going to get a charging cable. You're going to get headphones. Okay. This, I feel, for a bug-out radio is important. You may be listening to this somewhere where you don't want the whole world to hear a radio on. Very, very important. You get replacement earbuds. You get a carrying strap. You also get this little bag here for carrying your radio without damaging it. And a decent instruction manual. got to say, nice little manual, lots of information in it. It is in a bunch of different languages, but all in all, very easy to understand. So right about there is where the English stops. And I think it goes French and Spanish in there too. So all in all, a really nice little radio, nice little kit. So let's get it outside, and let's do the ultimate test, which is going to be see what we can pull in with this radio. All right, so here it is. I have it plugged in. Now, as for the antenna, I'm going to try and move it around here so you can see. Um, I just have it connected to that little basket up there, that wire basket. Again, it is not, that's a dead connection there. That's a piece of plastic. So it's not like it's using that as an antenna. It's not connecting to that at all. It's just clipped on there with a piece of plastic. So 
Let me put the camera back down here. And we will turn the radio on. Now, right now, I'm just going to start it off on air frequency. Now, we do have a regional airport here, a very tiny, tiny little private airport. The most you'll hear is maybe once in a while somebody um, calling in that they're landing. There's no tower. There's no ATIS. There's no nothing. It's just a little tiny airport where people live. It's actually an aero park where people have hangars on their property next to their houses. So you're not going to hear much there, but I wanted to show you it does get that. Okay. Next off, you're going to have CB. Okay. And by the way, that is the WWV channel. I just wanted to show you it on the CB frequencies. Pulling it in very, very well. Which probably means good things for 10 meters later today on field day. Okay, so you can hear that. VHF. Okay, UHF. You've got the weather band out here. There we go. Let's try this using the regular antenna. It's actually working better without the external antenna. But you can see that's really, really clear, coming in nice. And our weather band out here isn't necessarily um, very strong. It's kind of far away on the mountains where it is, so it doesn't come in as well as what you probably hear in the city. Okay, let's plug this back in. There we go. Let's get back to shortwave. Okay, let's move the band next. FM, of course, is working great. And this is just non-copyrighted, you know, talk radio and non-copyrighted music, so I don't get in trouble. President Biden's upcoming trip to Saudi Arabia next That's month nice. is our Next. <laughs> AM. You're not going to get AM out here. Unfortunately, we lost our AM stations. Kind of stinks. I just bumped by AM. Okay. So now we're back on WWE. Now here's the, the bandwidth filter I was telling you about. I go to set, okay? And I can move that wider or narrower. Have it really narrow now. And have it really wide at 600. So you can move that in or out depending on how you want it. I like to keep it around 200 because I find that just sounds better. You can kind of hear the clock ticking. Anyway, you can hear it back there in the background. And I found that works better. Now what I'm going to try to do is scan around and see if I can find some hams on sideband, on the ham bands, and uh, see how that sounds. So let me scan around and see what I can find. Now I have it on 20 meters here, and I have it on upper sideband. One of the things I wanted to show you, I haven't heard anything on 20 meters yet, is using this dial on the side here, the tuning dial, you can set the steps on this, so it's 10 megahertz, so I can go up or down. Now let's say I hear something there, but I want to tune it in a little finer. You'll notice where that blinking arrow is, and that I can go 9, and then if I want to get it really fine-tuned, I can go down to that last one and do that way. So you can tune in pretty much any signal. You don't need a BFO on this radio. You can tune directly to the, to the frequency and uh, get what you need to hear. So I'm going to turn around a little bit more and see if I can find anything. I'm really not finding anything on 20 meters. I'm also going to check inside to see if it's just me and I'm not hearing anything. This radio isn't hearing anything or the antenna isn't high enough. So let me check around and I'll bring you back. All right, so I do have some hams talking on this frequency, but the minute I turn on the camera, they stopped. <laughs> Let's see if they'll start back up again. You notice I have the tuning on that number right there. I'm just waiting for them to start talking again. I'm not hearing them now. That's a bummer. He was talking about how much power he's going to be running uh, for field day. So I'm going to put it back. Oh, there we go. And this is very common. You'll hear one side of the conversation and not the other. All right, I'm going to tune this in a little bit. Just stop. on 40 meters there. And there you go. So you can hear some really good uh, good ham radio stuff once you get it tuned in. This station's actually coming in weaker on my larger radio inside than this. Because I went in to tune around and make sure I wasn't just 
having problems with this radio, and it isn't. There's just not much on the band right now. So let's get it on the table. I'm going to give you my final thoughts on it, and we'll finish up the video. All right, back inside, and it was interesting as I was cutting off that the, the video, the gentleman who was talking that we heard talking on the 20 meters there was saying something about he's unsure what's going on with the band and why it was so dead. Um, it's just dead, you know, again, where you are, it may be hopping and people all over the place getting ready for field day. Um, out here, it just was dead, but we did pick them up. I did pick up a couple of shortwave stations. We got WWB in very well. There's one last thing I want to do really quickly before I give you the final rundown on this, and that's to test the two-meter um, receive on it. Now, it's going to be loud and noisy. I'm going to go outside with this radio here. We're going to just go on 5-2. I'm just going to identify, uh, and I'm going to let you listen to it. So I'm just going to walk outside of the door so you don't hear me talking, and you just hear the radio. It is going to be loud. I'll try and edit it as best I can so that uh, you don't have to hear the static for too long. All right, going outside. This is W6UTC. I am testing the radio. W6UTC, and I will be clear. W6UTC, testing again. I'm inside now. All right, let's turn off that noise. So, it does work there. That's pretty cool to be able to listen to your local ham radio repeaters as well as shortwave. So essentially this thing does everything. And I would assume that even with a, a bigger and better antenna than what I had, you would even be pulling in more stuff. I mean, you can get MLA 30s with that little plug on the end there and listen to it that way, and you'd really be pulling in the station. So definitely a cool little rig. I think for 100 bucks you're getting an amazing deal. And like I said, if you want to extend this antenna a bit, it's kind of in a pile over here. Uh, if you want to extend this antenna a little bit, I don't see why you couldn't at all. But it was pretty decent for what it did. I mean, it pulled in stuff fairly well. We actually heard um, some 20-meter ham chatter there. Uh, again, the bands are kind of funky this morning, so no idea why we're not hearing a lot. But it pulled the stuff in, and I'm very, very impressed with the radio. Sound quality is decent. All in all, nice little radio. doesn't feel fragile. doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart in your hands. feels fairly sturdy and fairly well made, and I love all the features. Now, if you have older eyesight, like mine is getting, <laughs> reading the little tiny displays up there can be a little difficult in sunlight. In dark, no problem at all. I was able to read it without anything. So one of the things I did like was the scan. Now, you hold down the tuning button, and it will start to scan the current band. A longer press will push, it will speed up the scan if no stations are found. Unlike some scanning radios, when a signal is found, it actually stops and doesn't resume, and I love that, because I'm able to figure out what I'm listening to. Um, that's why I found a shortwave station. I was scanning through, scanning through, and I came across a shortwave station. It's like, oh, cool, and it actually stopped and let me listen to it for a few, more than a few seconds. So i got to say, I'm really impressed with this little radio. I've listened to now amateur frequency, shortwave, AM, FM, weather, tried airband, but again, we have a private airport here that's basically part of, like, it's like a trailer park for people with airplanes. Seriously. And uh, there isn't much traffic going on out there. Sometimes on Saturdays you'll hear the skydiving tours come out here, and they'll you know say, hey, jumpers away at this area, do not fly near me. But there's not much traffic other than occasional, you know, person coming home from Vegas and saying, okay, I'm landing. You know, and that's about it. There's no air traffic control out there or anything like that. So um, there's really no air band. But I love the radio itself, and I think I'm going to be taking this with me. Um, I have something else coming from Ratty that's going to kind of change around how we do some stuff on this channel because <laughs> we're going to get out a little bit more and uh, I will let you know when that shows up but I think that's going to be part of the kit that we're going to use with that device that's coming so definitely I want you to check it out um, so that's the Ratty RF 760 it's the upgrade model to this little guy the 750 and I gotta say for the price point you are not going to get a better radio that is a really nice sounding decent radio that covers such a wide area of frequencies. Um, I mean, for you to get something like that that covers, you know, everything from AM, FM, shortwave, uh, low, lower F AM, uh, there's just so much on here. You got airband, everything, and it automatically switches to AM when you go to airband, so don't worry about that. And the fact that you have a adjustable bandwidth on it, uh, it's just amazing. You can do upper or lower sideband. Uh, it's, it's, it's a nice little radio for the price. So like I said, the price is $99.99, so $100. Bucks. It is on Amazon. If I forgot to say anything, check my link down below. I will have a link to my store where this will be, and you can check it out and see if there's anything in that link that I forgot to mention. Overall, dimensions is very, very small. It's 
It's about an inch and a half thick, about four and a half inches uh, tall, and about 3.4 inches wide. So definitely not a huge little, a huge radio. Again, you got this nice little case here to toss it in there. And this isn't part of it. That's just a, a plug. And I can toss it in there and make sure it won't get damaged. So definitely neat little package. I'm going to charge this thing up and get it ready for its next adventure. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out all our links, including our freeze-dried wholesaler link. I'm going to be doing, probably Monday or Tuesday, a video on a product I want to test out from them. And uh, if you want to get in on some deals, you click that link and you save 15% going just by using the link. Hop on over there, save 15% on the food. He did have to raise his prices a little bit. Basically, that's just how things are going now. The costs for farmers are going through the roof. So definitely a good time to get stocked up. And by using my link, you can kind of beat the price increase with 15% off. We also have our My Patriot Supply link. That's preparewithiridium.com. Preparewithiridium.com. $150 off on my site for a three-month kit of food. And below that is our Thrive Life freeze-dried food store. I'd like to say welcome to all my new delivery customers and my consultants. I noticed I got a lot of you this month. So I thank you guys for joining up. Um, it's definitely uh, busy. Now you're starting to see all of these food supply companies, pretty much except for um, freeze-dried wholesalers, run a little bit longer on their delivery. A freeze dried wholesaler has a little bit of delay. Your product might be two or three days late, but the rest of them are starting to run, you know, two weeks, three weeks. So definitely get your orders in and get stuff moving. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.